Hello, since I've gotten many questions like this, I'm gonna give you a solution. But this is a great opportunity for me to be comprehensive and explain all about wall stacking. First I'll go over what multi-TCing, or wall stacking, is, including some applications, strengths and weaknesses, and this is meant mostly for new players, as for me, you guys always come first. That said, I'm certain there will be some information even more seasoned builders will find interesting. And in the second part, I show how to do traditional wall stacking, even when blocked by terrain. And feel free to skip through if you only want that. So let's begin! All of my builds, and most modern builds in general, rely heavily on wall stacking. This is a method which allows you to build tiles around the core of your base which aren't actually attached to it. Rather, they are separated by a tiny, tiny gap. This means that the core base's TC does not maintain them, and a separate TC is needed for their upkeep, along with some protection for that TC. The traditional method for creating this tiny gap is pretty straightforward. If you want a wall stacked triangle here, build out 7 squares capped by a square or a triangle. Destroy the 7 squares, build back with triangles, and there you go. If you want a square here instead, build out 8 squares and continue as before. And the benefits of using this mechanic are pretty great. One is that it can significantly lower the daily upkeep cost of a base. In Rust, having more and more tiles connected to a single DC causes upkeep to rise exponentially. We call this the upkeep tax. But in this multi tc base, for example, these parts of the base are not in any way connected to the main TC. Rather, they each have a TC of their own, meaning less building tiles per TC, resulting in the lowering or potential elimination of the exponential upkeep tax. In terms of numbers, this is quite significant. Were I to build this same exact base, minus the external TCs, and with all tiles connected to the core, the upkeep would be this much. Keep in mind, however, that the initial build cost will be a bit higher, as these parts need to be built, but in most situations this will be covered for by the lowered upkeep within a couple of days, depending on the design, of course. Perhaps the most significant application is that these external tiles project around them an exclusion zone where no TC can be built. Thus, if raiders destroy the TC of the main base, they cannot build their own TC inside, meaning they cannot place doors, close the raid or grief your base, not without taking care of the other TCs, which can be expensive and time-consuming. In short, even if you do get raided, you'll still have your base. Also, there are some very cool tricks that can be done with wall stacking, which I utilize in my most recent builds, such as these conditional roof bunkers here. So far so good, but what about weaknesses? Well, yes, there are a few. Luckily, however, most can be avoided through intelligent design. The point of multi-TCing is to create a tiny gap between the main base and the external additions. However, these gaps can be exploited to lower rate cost by splashing several layers of the base at once. So using wall stacking intelligently means you need to close these to a point where a rocket can't pass through. Or to a point where it doesn't matter if it does. And I see these mistakes on pretty much every wipe I play. Remember, a rocket can fit through a single pixel of a gap. They have no physical model in Rust. Even worse, just because you can't see a gap, doesn't mean it's not there, ready to be exploited. Funnily though, when it comes to foundations, though the gap may be clearly visible to you, it seems Rust can't see it. So rocketing through foundations is mostly impossible, unless the gap is huge. When building, you should test and shore these weaknesses. This is not wall stacked. No stability issues. This is wall stacked. Since wall stacked portions usually have fewer walls and supports than the bulk of the base, stability will tend to be more of a problem. Luckily these issues are easy to fix, usually, but it can come at a slight cost. Just be aware, test it through and fix where needed. 
Also, having too few foundations and overbuilding on them is not a good idea. Too many foundations is better than too few. Buffer the important ones whenever possible. Another potential issue is if you build too much of your base on external TCs, your base can actually be more easily griefed. This is usually not done as farming rockets just to grief someone's external TCs is usually not what people do with their time, but it's possible and it does happen. There are ways to get around this, but the simplest one is to make sure that even if people do it, it will not be a big issue. I would suggest, to begin with, never making the core of your base overly dependent on external TCs. Rather, use them for maintaining protective shells, shooting floors, gatehouses. In all these configurations, they still lower upkeep and or give you grief protection in addition to fulfilling their intended function. So, should you use wall stacking in your bases? For me, it's a definite yes. The benefits far outweigh the issues, all of which are mitigated with proper design. Now, remember the method of building out a line of 8 squares? What if rust gets in the way? What if you're blocked by terrain, for example? Well, if you want to do a traditional wall stack and can't go that far, the solution is simple. You still need to go out 8 squares, but it doesn't matter how many steps this takes. So, for example, go out 2 squares, return with triangles. Go out 2 squares again, now 4. Return with triangles. Again, do the same with two more squares. And one last time, add two more squares, making it a total of eight. Returning with triangles, and here's that perfectly placed wall stacked square we wanted. And instead of going this far from the base, we only went this far. You can even go one square at a time and do traditional wall stacking in some very tight situations. Just so long as it totals 8 squares for a wall stacked square or 7 for a triangle. Now you'll still need to go out a bit from your base to build the external TC itself, but this is much less of an issue, as the line doesn't have to go straight out and you can snake around obstacles. I think that in 95% of the cases this will solve any practical issue. There's also a technique called freehand wall stacking, which goes like this. I would say it's good for adding bunkers to the sides of bases and not much else, since you will nearly never get perfect alignment. And there's another technique, related to wall stacking, called the white gap technique. This is done by building out four squares from the sides of a base, then returning with triangles and placing a bunch of frames. It'll remain stable even if the base is pummeled with rockets, allowing you to continue defending. At least that's the idea. And it can support some really nice shooting floor designs. I use this design for a base I'm working on right now. The namesake wide gaps are big enough to be useful as peaks while being too small to ladder or fall through. So there, this was supposed to be a one minute video. <laughs> but uh, there you go, all you ever wanted to know about wall stacking, I guess. Now I hope this was entertaining, informative or just competent enough to elicit the clicking of the like button, which I will eternally appreciate and forever cherish. And I hope to see you again, happy and in good health. Goodbye for now, and blessed be.